Ever looked at your business and wondered which teams are actually driving results? Your chart of accounts won't tell you that. Everything is mixed together. That's where departments or classes come in. They let you slice your business by team and turn one messy report into multiple powerful views. But tracking and presenting your data by class can get tricky, and I'm gonna fix that. In this video, we'll walk through eight dashboards for departments and classes, and each one tells you something completely different about your business. And if you want all of these dashboards already connected to your QuickBooks Online data, you can try my tool, ModelWiz, but more on that later. Let's first start with a quick explanation of how exactly classes work. Here's a traditional profit and loss. You see every income and expense account, but none of this tells you which department actually spent the money. I had a client who raised a ton of capital and jumped from 10 to 40 employees in a few weeks. And overnight, their business looks totally different. They used to look something like this, and now they look something like this. Suddenly, everything ran through departments. To track activity across those departments, the simplest method is something called a class. And the idea is simple. When you categorize a transaction to an account, you also assign a class tag. So every row now has two dimensions, what happened and where it happened. And classes aren't just for departments. You can also use them for business lines or locations or cost centers or projects. Different ERPs actually give these different names, but the concept is identical. Each tag adds a new dimension to your reporting. So now that we're familiar with how classes work, let's jump into Excel and look at eight different dashboards that showcase your data by class. All right, so here's how I traditionally prepare a summarized profit and loss. And you'll notice that I have all the information here by what I like to call a summary grouping or a cost type. And it's pretty simple how exactly I do that. I have a mapping over here where I call summary grouping, and I'm just grouping all the information for each and every single one of my accounts into these different buckets. And then I utilize a sum ifs, as you can see over here, where I am summing the value from the relevant column, my income statement, if that mapping column is equal to the flag that I have over here. And you'll notice that I also have year-to-date, annual, and quarterly figures as well. Now, again, while this is good, it doesn't show our information by class. So let's go ahead and change that with this view right here. So now, instead of aggregating my operating expenses by the cost type, you can see that I have all of the departments or classes that make up my business shown over here. And the way that I pulled in these figures is with a very similar structure to how I did with the income statement over here. But there's an issue. This income statement only shows all of my values by account. I need to now get an export of the information by account and class. Well, that's what this driver's tab is for. And in financial modeling, it's actually really common to have a driver's tab where all of your assumptions lie. So in this case, I'm pulling in all of my historical values all the way through my last month of actuals, which in this case is October. And I can see the class as well as the summary grouping. So now I could project values not only by GL account, but also by the class that it relates to. And my formula here is really very similar, right? I'm just summing up the values in the relevant column. If the class column, which is column G over here, is equal to the class that I have over here. So what I like to do is in a board report, for example, I will show two separate snapshots. The first one showcasing the profit and loss by cost type, like you see over here. The second one showcasing the profit and loss by class. The same numbers just presented differently. What if you want to understand your profit and loss by class and cost type? Well, that's what brings me to this dashboard over here. And what I like is, again, we have all of the classes over here, but I can now extend one of the classes and see the summary groupings that relate to this total. So it looks like in the events and partnerships team, this is how much was spent in advertising and marketing versus payroll, travel, meals, and entertainment. And again, as I extend that to all of these other classes, I could still see that same information. So what we did was we just took the last two dashboards where I showed by cost type and then by class and combined it into one. Now, you wanna be careful. You don't wanna to include too much detail over here because again, you could overwhelm the user, but I find that this is a really good way that you can strike that balance between both levels of detail. But although this is helpful, again, it's just one of many ways that we can showcase all of our dashboards by class. Here's another view where, again, I have my summary profit and loss by these summary groupings, but now I have my classes going across horizontally as you see as such. 
And what's great is now I can see all that information in a more condensed view from what we just covered. But a trade-off is that I can now only show the information across one time period. So in this case, as you can see, I'm showcasing all that info for 2025. Well, I can come down over here and change this to let's say this quarter. And now we can show all the information for Q4 2025 or really any other period that I have over here. So again, a simpler approach seeing the information on both the X and Y axis. But now the sacrifice is I have to show all the information over just one time horizon. I can't compare, let's say, Q1 to Q2 until I show you the dashboard coming up. But before we get to that dashboard, let's talk about another view, and that's a project profitability summary. So we spoke earlier about the fact that classes could also be used instead to track projects. And in many ERPs, they actually have a special projects tag that you can use instead of the class. But again, the schema is the same. This is especially popular with construction companies where they wanna track each and every single project's profitability. Well, that's what this dashboard shows us. We could understand our revenue and then our direct cost, which is both our work in process and our cost of goods sold to get our gross margin. We then can calculate our overhead expenses by analyzing our operating expenses and our overhead from our assets to get our net margin, both in terms of dollars and percentages. And notice in this case, we have all of our projects going across vertically. So however many I have in this one view, I could easily understand the profitability. Now, this is one of the major reasons that construction companies struggle with their financial reporting. It's not easy to put this all together, but in this view, you now get everything that you need. Now, if you're wondering how you can get your own data from your accounting system into a spreadsheet, all mapped up in a way that looks like this, I actually got something for you. See, we spent the last six years developing this Excel add-in called ModelWiz. And look how simple it is. I just clicked this add-ins button over here to open it. And now I can connect my QuickBooks Online account. As I connect my QuickBooks Online account, I'll just click this dashboards button and I could choose from any of these amazing dashboards. And what's really cool is that all I need to do is click the dashboard and we'll bring in your information, transformed by class, entirely shaped to the information in your accounting system. And like I spoke about, you don't wanna just show your historicals, you'll also wanna show where the company is going. That's why we make it so easy with this drivers tab that you see over here. I can change any assumption across any GL account or class for my PL, as well as my balance sheet. And then each month, whenever I close out a new month, all I need to do is hit this roll forward button and choose the new last month of actuals. Our app will then scan through your accounting software, detect any of those new accounts, and surgically add them in the right place so none of your projections get overridden. It will then bring forward your new last month of actuals and all of your reports will update dynamically. Now, because this is in Excel, which to me is the most important tool for finance and accounting, it's entirely customizable. You do whatever you want with your data. In fact, no one even has to know that you used ModelWiz to create this. And if you're an accounting firm, I'd love to speak with you and tell you about our new accounting firm insider program. You'll get access to some amazing perks, hands-on support from me personally, and some incredible discounts so you can offer advisory services at scale. Go ahead and check out the link in the description to book a call with our team to learn more. All right, now let's get back to the video. So far, we've been analyzing all of our reports in various dashboards with formulas. What if instead we wanted to aggregate that information in a pivot table to allow me to understand what's happening by class? Well, that's what these dashboards do over here. I can filter for any period that you see over here. I could also filter for any class and all of my data dynamically updates. I could then expand the information to see both the summary grouping as well as the account, even down to the transaction level. And it doesn't just need to be in this traditional profit and loss format. I could also do this comparison profit and loss, as well as this budget for actuals. Now, if you want to know how to create these dashboards, I have a whole separate video where I do a full on tutorial on how to build those, which I'll link to below. But this is just another powerful way that you can showcase your information by department or class. But while pivot tables are great, I personally am the biggest fan of a really well-structured spreadsheet with the proper formulas. So let's look at a few more examples of that before we end. Going back to this view, I love how easily I can understand my profit and loss by cost type across any time horizon as I scroll right or left. What if I wanted to also filter by class? Well, I can do that by just extending this plus button and now I have a bunch of checkboxes for different classes. Now notice what happens when I uncheck one of these classes all of my results are updating. And you could also see over here, I'm listing out all of the classes that are actually selected. If I go back to checking all of these off, you now see all of the classes are selected over here. 
So this is another really powerful way that I could understand my business where I could maybe even make duplicate tabs, one for just sales and marketing, one for general administrative, one for research and development, and all the information is at my fingertips. But again, it doesn't have to be just a standard profit and loss. What if I wanted to compare against prior period and prior year? Well, that's what I could do with this dashboard over here. And again, I can just uncheck any of the information and you'll see that all my values start to update. And I'm comparing right now October versus the prior month and prior year. But I could just change that by clicking this button and selecting, let's say, this quarter. And now I'm comparing things on a quarterly basis. So this class filter could really be used in a number of different scenarios, not only for a profit and loss in a traditional sense like you see over here, but taking it one step further and going to our last dashboard, this KPI dashboard operates on the same principle. So again, I can check or uncheck any of the values and all of these boxes will go ahead and update. And what I love about this is it also has special formatting depending on the total value that you see. And once again, I can just change this from this quarter to let's say this year or even this month and all of my values dynamically update compared to prior month, prior year, or I could even select budget. So now you have eight different ways that you could present information about your company's departments, projects, locations, or classes all directly in Excel. And while these dashboards are helpful, they're really just a few of the many dashboards out there. That's why I made this video over here, which I think you'll totally love. I'm Josh, your CFO guy, and I'll catch you next time.